All right, my name is uh, E.J. Daigle, uh, Dean of Robotics and Manufacturing here at Dunwoody College. Um, I know a lot of you here at the college as we've moved to online have shifted to using the, the Wacom tablet and I, I commend you on that choice because I think what you're gonna find using this tablet is for a very, very small amount of money. Um, you know, I paid 50 bucks for mine. Uh, they go as maybe as high as about $120 if you want a really big one, um, but you don't need to buy the biggest tablet. Um, the $50, $60 version is going to do you just fine. And let me, let me explain to you why it's going to do you just fine. Um, first of all, the Wacom tablet really is just like your mouse um, or your mouse pad. Um, essentially, what you're looking at right here is a big extension of your, of your touchpad on your computer. So like this area right here is all touch. And what I'm doing is I'm using the tip of this pen to basically navigate around here. So as I write on this portion of the screen, you know, if I write hello, as I'm writing that on my tablet right now, that would be showing up up here is what would actually be happening in the real world. Um, and it allows you to do drawings, do all kinds of cool stuff. In addition to that, by just uh, pressing and holding the tip of the pen down, you can bring up your pointer options and go to something like an eraser and I can get rid of some of this stuff. Or if I'm doing calculations, I can go back to my pointer options and I can grab a pen um, and then I can go pick a different color if I want. So pointer options and I can go to an ink color and maybe I wanna use a uh, green one here now. So, you know, Y equals MX plus B. I will make one big warning. Um, you know, I've been using this tablet for about I don't know, about 10 years now. Mine's actually an older version. This is this is what the new version looks like. Mine doesn't even look like that. My buttons are in the corners. Um, but uh, what I would tell you is, is when you first start to write with this, you're gonna write kind of like a kindergartner. So don't, don't be too discouraged. Um, the learning curve is pretty steep, but it's very quick. So the ability to hold that pen down, again, go grab my pointer options and I want a different color again. I'll go grab my other color here and I'll pick uh, I don't know, maybe I'll pick purple or something like that, you know, and maybe I want to graph y equals 3x plus 7, right? So there are some things that are, they're never going to be perfect. Um, but when you're talking to a student online and you just want the ability to do some quick sketching, um, you know, you can easily go spend, you know, $1,000 on something like an iPad or, a, a, you know, a couple hundred dollars on a Chromebook or something like that. Um, but the beauty of this guy is he's small enough that I can throw him right in my backpack with everything I have, and he's set up and ready to go in 30 seconds. Now, there's one big recommendation, so some rules when using this. Um, number one, um, no dual monitors. So what will happen as you're using the Wacom tablet is if you're using dual monitors, what you're going to discover is that you'll be trying to write right here, blah, 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 and your writing will show up over here, and that's gonna screw you up to no end. It's gonna be like your, your, your tablet isn't calibrated. Well, and the reason why that is, is because you're essentially giving your tablet um, two different locations. Um, you plugged it in, and it's working off of the, the monitor that you're plugged into on your laptop, and your bigger screen has a different screen resolution, um, so they're not gonna line up, and, that, and that's okay. Um, I always do this with my laptop monitor. I don't ever have a second monitor. And sometimes I'll even note that um, when, I, when, I, when I have a second monitor, um, I'll see that it feels like it's not calibrated. I'll go ahead and unplug my second monitor. I'll reboot my computer and it'll work perfect. And then I just make sure from that point on, I always work off of only one monitor. Um, the second thing that I will tell you is these buttons right here. Um, the second rule that I have is disable the pen buttons. So, and I'll show you how to do that real quick here. Um, and the reason why you wanna disable those pen buttons is they're kind of set up like a left click, right click, and they do different things. Um, but I'm working in a PowerPoint slide, and that's kind of my third rule, is, is I really like working in PowerPoint presentation. Um, to me, that's the easiest way to annotate what I'm doing. And if I want to do a screen recording of my lecture, super duper duper simple. Um, but the reason why I say to disable these buttons is if I'm in a PowerPoint right now and I accidentally hit a button on this pen and it's not disabled, it's going to bounce between slides. And these are just, these buttons are in the perfect location 
for where your fingers, you know, would curve around in your hand as you're using this thing. I'll just draw my little stick guy here. Woohoo! Um, but with that being said, I don't, I don't want those buttons to do things because it's just going to bounce the slides around. It's going to make for a horrible presentation. Let me show you real quick where you would do that. I'll, I can discard my annotations. If you want to keep your annotations, you can keep them. Um, or my recommendation is to do a, a screen capture in studio or whatever your screen capture software is. Do a video, do all your annotations. I'll keep them for now just because we may want to come back to this slide. Um, but uh, where was I going? Oh, the buttons. So when you install the drivers and the software, you'll get an icon called the Wacom Desktop Center. And when you go into that Wacom Desktop Center, it's gonna bring it up and it's gonna look like this. And I can never, oh, pen settings. It's, I guess it's pretty easy to find actually. Um, and it's gonna open up to say pen settings. So you can set those pen settings to whatever you want. They can be right click, left click, you know, double click. Um, they can correspond to keyboard things. Um, I would tell you right now, you're gonna be happy by disabling both of those. On the tablet itself, my buttons are in the corners. Again, my tablet's a little bit older. Mine's an Intuos uh, PTS. Um, so I've got like my, my upper right click uh, runs the calculator. My uh, upper left button does the, uh, uh, brings up like a right click to change the colors and stuff. And I'll tell you why that's important. For, for what I do, I do a lot of, uh, a lot of electronics and before I get into that demo, I, I will tell you this is where you can find the support. When you get a Wacom tablet, it comes with all the stuff you need. It goes, goes through like a setup guide. There's like a three-step guide. Go to this website, click here, click here, click here, and your tablet's ready to go. Just make sure you know where your Wacom desktop center is so you can set up your buttons and disable your pen, um, install the driver, install the software, whatever you need to do. Um, that part's pretty easy. Um, again, the rules, I, I can't stress these enough. Number one, no dual monitors. Just work off your laptop monitor, um, and you're gonna you're gonna love this thing. I promise you. Number two, disable the pen buttons. They're gonna drive you nuts if you don't disable the pen buttons. And number three, I recommend working in PowerPoint, and this is the reason why. So I'll give you an example of a circuit here. And so, and when we work with Ohm's law, we say that um, V equals I times R. That is to say that voltage equals current times resistance. So if I was doing a simple uh, set of Ohm's law calculations, what I would do is I would create this PowerPoint slide. Um, and I say it's Ohm's law series circuit, and here's my circuit over here, right? There's my circuit over on this side. And what I wanna do is I wanna solve. And maybe I tell the students, okay, students, I need you to help me solve um, what is the current um, through R1. So let's find out what the current through R1 is. Well, we know that the current, if I manipulate this equation, I can resolve this and I can say, okay, I'll divide each side. Um, uh, what are we gonna do here? If I wanna solve current, uh, divide each side by R. So then I get I equals V over R. And again, when you first start writing on the Wacom, you're gonna write like a kindergartner. Do not, please do not give up. You're gonna love this thing. I promise you, it's gonna take a little bit. So to calculate this, I need the voltage of R1. I need to divide by the resistance of R1. Well, I got a problem here. I don't have the voltage of R1. I only have the resistance of R1. So maybe I can calculate the current. Well, I know that the current in a series circuit is equal to the total current. So the total current is equal to the total voltage divided by the total resistance. That I can calculate. Um, and I know that will give me um, IR1, which will give me VR1. So I'm going about it kind of a backwards way, but that'll work. Um, so in this particular case, IT or the total current is equal to total voltage, which is 12 volts, divided by total resistance, which is 1,470 ohms. That's uh, 470 plus 1,000. And I'm gonna get a number for this. Now, the beauty of this is I don't have a calculator handy, but I pre-programmed that button on my Wacom to bring up my calculator. There's my calculator, isn't that handy? And I know that, um, I was 12 volts divided by 1,470 ohms. I get 0 0.00816 amps. So now I can write that in as, uh, or 0 0.00816 amps could also be written as 8.16 milliamps. That's my total current. That's also gonna be my, my IR1. Um, so I guess I've already solved for IR1. So if I was calculating IR1, well, IR1 is equal to 8.16 milliamps, right? 
Um, I didn't actually need to do that. I did it with the total current, right? Um, I basically negated that and I said, well, IR1 is equal to IT and IT is equal to 12 volts divided by 1470 ohms, which is equal to 8.16 milliamps. And you can still see that even after using this thing for 10 years or so, I still write like a kindergartner. Um, now let's say I wanted to calculate the voltage of R1. The voltage of R1, well, we know that's IR1 times R1. So IR1 times R1, which is going to be equal to, um, IR1 is 8.16 milliamps times R1, which is 1000 ohms. Uh, the good news is that uh, I think is going to come out to 8.16 volts. So don't probably don't need a calculator, but I do like showing off my calculator because I can hit that right button again, brings up my calculator and I say 0 0.00816, that's 8.16 milliamps times 1000 ohms. I get 8.16 volts and go ahead and click off of that. And now I have 8.16 volts DC. Boom. And so you can see how handy this is. And because I'm doing this in a screen capture mode in studio, I can now load this video and all my students can watch it and it's gonna be that much easier for them to use. Now I've learned something from my faculty. So I, I uh, threw these uh, Wacom tablets out to a few of my faculty. We purchased some for the department and my faculty have shown me, EJ, you don't have to be in a PowerPoint slide. And I'm like, what? I didn't know that was possible. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what uh, Ado taught me. Um, I think it's either Ado or Alex, I can't remember which one. Um, but I don't need to be in a PowerPoint slide, which is to say, I got all kinds of windows open right now. You actually have, when you plug this uh, device in, it's gonna bring up, I call it virtual ink, um, but it's called Windows Ink Workspace. And so you'll see that pop up down here. And that really is what Windows is using to do the annotations on your PowerPoint slides and so on and so forth. But if you bring up Windows Ink Workspace, and I'm even gonna, yeah, I'm gonna bring up a Word document just as an example. I'm just gonna open up a blank Word document. I did this the other day with some students on uh, Microsoft Teams. And um, I'm just gonna go to Windows Ink Workspace and I'm gonna say Sketch Screen. I'm just gonna click on that. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna give me a similar set of tools. You'll see them up top now. I actually think this is almost easier than working with the, uh, working with the, uh, the PowerPoint because I can select my tools right up here. I got a ballpoint pen, I've got a pencil, I've got a highlighter, I got all my tools up here. They're the same tools. Got my eraser, they're all the same tools, ruler, stuff like that. Um, they're just the Windows tools and my Wacom tablet is now using those. So earlier today, uh, Jim Rowell said, hey, you know, I just wanna be able to show students how a part is held in a vise. So we went in here and we said, okay, well, let's pick a color, you know, and let's just draw what the vise would look like sitting on a, on a machine in the machine shop. So we'd have a, a fixed jaw. So I'll call this the jaw of the vise. Uh, we'd have a movable jaw, which would be on this side. And again, this is where you're gonna really see my, uh, my uh, what I call it, my, my kindergartner, kindergartner uh, writing here. So there's my, my vise and that this movable jaw will move in and out to clamp down a part. And then I wanna show them where the parallels sit, if we're gonna use a set of parallels. So a set of parallels would sit right along here on this side and a set of parallels would sit right along here on this side. So, and I can even go ahead and label those. I could say, okay, this is my, my set of parallels, okay? These are my parallels, okay? And then where does your part sit? Well, let's get a different color altogether then. Let's grab purple or uh, maybe blue. I, th uh, I don't know what's gonna highlight here, orange maybe? Uh, I think green is probably my best. I'm gonna grab green. And then my, my part actually extends above there and it sits across those parallels. So that gets my part up there. And now as I'm coming across with my, my mill or my tooling or whatever that looks like, I'm gonna start cutting across the top of that part. But the jaws are holding that part on the parallels to seat that up back up off the base. Now, the neat thing about this is if I did something like this and I just wanted to real quick share this on Teams, I could do that. Uh, the other thing I can do is I can actually save it. So if I wanna just grab it real quick and save it, you know, maybe I'll save this to my desktop as my, uh, my vice, um, you know, and I could, I could email that as a, as, a, uh, 
as a document to my students. So I could just go find my vice here and I could say, you know what, I'm gonna email this to you real quick. Or if I wanted to snip it out and put it into something, I could use my snipping tool and just cut out the amount that I wanna use. And maybe I'll even go back and put that into my PowerPoint slide at some point so that I could then, uh, you know, do whatever I wanted to do with it, you know, and, and talk about that device or whatever. So it gives you, a, um, gives you a lot of capabilities as to what you can do with this device. And now that it's in here, I could still annotate from in here too using the PowerPoint slide, you know. So if I want to come in here now and say, okay, yeah, remember these are your parallels and I want to change color to the part uh, for whatever that's worth. I can change the ink color to that to a similar green and say, yeah, here's your part up here. You know, so you can annotate on annotations even if you want to. Um, but there's a number of different ways. And I will tell you what, um, there's probably about 20 of these Wacom tablets being used by faculty in all of our departments right now. And I just, I can't recommend, recommend them enough. You know, for 50 bucks, I think even for the small one, I think the highest price I've ever seen is 79 bucks. And that's for a nicer one than what I have. Um, just a great, great tool. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to help you uh, get set up uh, with your Wacom tablet. Thank you.